Howdy SEO Moz fans, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week we're talking about a very concerning and controversial topic, negative SEO. Now, negative SEO has a number of meanings. I want to walk through them and, and get to some points. If you've been paying attention to sort of the Twitter sphere or uh, the SEO blogosphere over the past week, two weeks, there's been a lot of discussion around negative SEO, particularly backlink pointing to bring down sites. I will get to that, but first I want to start with some of the classic ways that negative SEO could potentially hurt you. The, the idea behind negative SEO is that rather than doing good positive things that will promote signals in the search engines that bump up your rankings, there are ways to do bad, terrible, negative things. Now obviously you could do these on your own sites, but hopefully you're smart enough not to do that. But there may be things that other site owners or webmasters or marketers or, or, or black hat SEOs, mostly we're talking about black hat SEOs, spammers, uh, even people doing very illegal things to bring down your website in the rankings or to even take your website offline. There's classic types of things like malware, hacks, and injection. So this is the first one I'm going to talk about. And, and basically what we're saying here is that, you know, you've got your site, it has some pages on here. and uh, hackers may find security vulnerabilities in your site, in, in your FTP logins, in maybe a WordPress install. I, I, earlier this year I had a, a hacker essentially come in and inject spam and malware onto my personal blog at, at ranfishkin.com slash blog. And the idea is that they'll inject spam, that, uh, links to spam sometimes, sometimes very subtly. They will uh, make changes to your site. One of the classic examples of this is someone going and editing your robots.txt file to block Googlebot or to uh, restrict all IPs from a certain range or those kinds of things. And obviously that's going to take your site out of the search engines. Or inject viruses or malware that will install itself on computers that visit you. Unfortunately, I was actually visiting um, mozcation.com, which Gianluca Fiorelli, one of our pro members from, from Spain, had set up, he's Italian but from Spain, uh, had set up last year to promote mozcation in uh, Barcelona in Spain. And uh, unfortunately, it looked like some spammers had injected some malware on that site and it had been on there a little while. I think he's taking care of it now, but these are the types of problems. What you'll see is like a download will go into your cache and sometimes you know, Microsoft Security Essentials will alert you that, 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 that that's happening, hopefully, if you've got it installed. So this is something to watch out for. You want to close those security holes. The, the, the other kinds of things to watch out for is, is spam reporting. So this is essentially Sometimes a lot of people, unfortunately, in the SEO sphere still do manipulative kinds of link building. Now, obviously, most of the people who watch Whiteboard Friday are, are not in that group, but some of you probably are. You know, you, maybe you buy a few directory listings, you go on Fiverr and you buy some cheap links, you, you, know, you find some, some spam through some forums that potentially works. You're doing sorts of things that are on the, on the gray hat, black hat borderline in terms of link acquisition. And sometimes you will see that your competitors might spam report you. So, right, so this guy's going to go over to Google and maybe he'll leave a thread at webmaster at the webmaster forums or he'll send it through a spam report in his google webmaster tools uh, and a, you know a lot of this spam reporting i think they, they said they get tens of thousands of spam reports uh, each month i believe it was so not not actually fewer than i'd expect but uh, a lot of people do report spam to google these might be you know your competitors these might be other webmasters they could just be random people on the internet who are like why is this site ranking here this looks terrible i don't like this uh, when this happens, Google might take a closer look at your backlinks and obviously this might bring you down. There's arguments about the uh, ethics inside the search engine industry. Personally, I think that removing low quality crap from the internet is all of our jobs and, and I, I like to be part of that. I think that it's a good thing to make the internet a better place and if you're not making the internet a better place, uh, I, I hope that you're not doing web marketing because it, it makes the rest of our industry looks, look bad. However, uh, Certainly reasonable minds can disagree. Aaron Wall uh, from SEO Book, who I highly respect, who I, who I you know, grew up with in this industry and, and think the world of, takes a complete opposite view, thinks that you know, because I support um, uh, disclosing spam and manipulation to Google and to search engines that, that this makes me a bad person. And that's too bad, that's frustrating, but um, I, I think reasonable people can disagree. And certainly whatever angle you're on on this, you should at least be aware that this stuff happens and know that it's a potential risk, particularly if you're doing highly, highly manipulative things. The last one I want to talk about is actually the biggest one and, the, and then probably the most important and the most salient and relevant to what we've been talking about today. And that is pointing nasty links to your website. Now this has been something that a, a lot of webmasters have been discussing actively 
uh, over the last couple of weeks in the sphere, essentially kicked off by a forum thread on uh, traffic power forums. I, I haven't previously spent a lot of time there, but it's a very active forum uh, populated by a, a wide mix of sort of white hat folks, gray hat folks, some, some pretty dark black hat folks, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So uh, two members there, Jammy and Pixel Grinder, uh, hit two different websites. One is called seofaststart.com. That's owned by Dan Thies. Dan, of course, um, you know, uh, uh, early keyword research guru in the SEO space, uh, big industry mover and shaker, spoke at a lot of the early search engine strategies, conferences. Um, I've met him a number of times, really, really good guy, solid guy. And uh, he complimented Matt Cutts, the uh, Google web spam chief uh, on the search quality team complimented him over Twitter on knocking out some spam. And, and some, these, some people on the forum felt that it was, um, I don't know, in, in poor taste, right? Essentially, to, they felt that uh, because he was being complimentary to Google for kicking out web spam, that he should then be the target of this, this negative SEO stuff. The other site was negativeseo.me, which was services, essentially a website offering services to get someone banned from the search indices. And this is, um, you know, a little concerning in, of, in and of itself. Now, the thing that's interesting about these sites, and, and Dan admitted this about SEO Fast Start, not a very big site, right? Not a lot of great uh, brand or link signals, potentially some, you know, some small amounts of, of not wholly white hat types of activities already happening around these sites. So we're not talking about, you know, A, big brand sites or B, sites that uh, have no idea about the SEO world and aren't doing anything manipulative and are, you know, clean as the driven snow. The, these are a little, a little off, that, uh, off that track. Uh, these were both hit by these, by these guys, at least presumably according to the forum thread, and lost a lot of their rankings. And, and when I say hit, what I mean is this type of thing happens. So here's your site.com up here, right? And, and essentially what's going on is you've got some nice, you know, white hat, editorially given, earned links, high quality stuff. And that's, that's great. And then there's some kind of this dark cloud of black hattery, spammy, manipulative posts. And they talked about a number of things, um, X rumor blasts, buying links on Fiverr, uh, buying links from some link networks, pointing some links that they had seen uh, get hit on other sites at this site. And it essentially triggered this, this kind of loss of rankings. Now they didn't get banned from the index, but they fell from, I think Dan Thies's site in particular, fell from ranking number one for his personal name to number 30, 35, somewhere around there, and, and hits like that, similar across both these sites. The second example um, was started, an, another forum thread started by uh, a user with the username Negative SEO, and that was for the domain JustGoodCars.com. Now, again, Just Good Cars, unfortunately, looks like they were doing a little bit of things that might be construed as manipulative, even prior to this, this attack on them by the Negative SEO guy. And that, you know, some links that were of questionable sources or how they were acquired. And then a big network of websites that were all pointing back and forth to each other from many different pages on these many different sites. Um, and, and, and this guy sort of, you know, uh, took it upon himself to say, well, they were, I guess uh, this website had been complaining in the Google Webmaster forums about some other sites outranking them. And so this, uh, this person took it upon themselves to um, do some pretty nasty evil stuff. Now, I, I, I can't support this. Uh, in any way, and I'm, I'm frustrated that unfortunately this is a part of our world. But you should be aware of it because what they did is um, creative, uh, almost, almost to the point of ingenuity, but uh, definitely dark and evil, maybe even bordering on uh, illegal depending on the legalities. I, I, I'm not really sure. Here's what they said they did. Of course, I can't prove that they actually did these things, but here's what they said they did. So they did go do a lot of uh, manipulative, nasty backlinking to the site from a lot of those sources we talked about. They said, uh, they mentioned a few X rumor blasts. They posted a lot of duplicate content. So they, say, they set up fake WordPress uh, splogs essentially, right? A, a spam blog. And then they reposted the content that existed on, on justgoodcars.com uh, on tens of thousands of pages across the web so that Google might say, oh, well, why is this duplicate content? I, I don't know that that's actually highly concerning in and of itself. A lot of people copy content from all over the web um, for both good and bad reasons. Then they did something that's really nasty. Uh, they went to Fiverr and they asked for uh, people to post fake reviews to Google reviews to make it look like Just Good Cars was manipulating Google reviews and actually got them thrown out of that program uh, 
well, according to the, the forum post anyway, that's, that's what happened. They got their, you know, their stars and their Google reviews and their ratings removed and all that kind of stuff, which that's, whew, that's really low. That, that sucks uh, if that's what really happened. Then they sent, um, it's even more terrifying, but they sent fake emails. They set up email addresses that looked like they came from Just Good Cars and sent fake emails to websites that had posted good editorial positive links saying, hey, you should stop linking this site. You know, there's these problems with it. Uh, we're requesting a DMCA takedown action against it. Our attorneys will be in touch if you don't remove your links, those kinds of things. So really, just like, oh, oh man, that's, that's really evil. Uh, but, but stuff that we definitely need to be aware of in terms of the world of, of negative SEO and, and what this kind of stuff can happen. Now, it's very tough to verify anonymous users on an anonymous forum posting and whether all of this stuff actually happened. But certainly the ideas behind it are very concerning. And what I want to express today is that there's, there's some things you can do on your site that will make you higher risk and lower risk to these kinds of things. So a couple of these, you know, higher risk is going to be like some of these other sites, you've already done a little bit of manipulative linking, right? You've already done some, some spammy stuff. Uh, you have manipulative on-site stuff. So meaning, for example, like, like Just Good Cars, there's kind of that footer with all these links pointing to all these other places. This was mentioned in the, in the forum thread, so I'm not, I'm not giving away new information here, but, but there's stuff on the site that looks like it might be uh, not wholly kosher, not wholly white hat. Your site has few high quality brand signals. High quality brand signals, things like um, lots of people searching for your domain name and brand name, uh, lots of mentions of you in the news and press, uh, in outlets that are, that are high quality, uh, lots of offline sorts of signals, lots of user and usage metrics types of signals, lots of verification kinds of things. You know, using um, high quality providers of, of everything from the IP address where your website's hosted to the domain registration length to the uh, uh, services that you might have installed on your site. You know, uh, Akamai, right, a CDN network suggests you're very popular. The, any type of signal like this that, that looks like a highly brand uh, intense signal. Lower risk is going to be the opposite, right? So things like a totally clean backlink profile. Never done any kind of manipulative linking, at least not, not intentional outbound uh, backlink building. And don't forget, everyone's going to have some spam links. Even if you've never done any manipulative backlinking or any backlink or market of any kind, you will have some bad backlinks. Because the web just, there's all sorts of weird crawlers and bots that post links all over the place. And it's fine. Don't, don't sweat those. those this is the normal volume. Uh, Things like having a beautiful, elegant, high quality UX. Great UX is a fantastic defense against a lot of spam and manipulation. It's even a great tactic that, that you know, for folks who uh, are doing, are trying to do SEO, it's just a great signal in general, right? Having a great UX is going to get you more conversions and more people using your site. And anyone who's uh, browsing your website, right, say from the Google search quality team or the web spam team or the Google reviewers, right, which Google hires or, or from Bing, any of those folks who are looking at your site are going to say, oh, well, this, is, this is clearly a great site. We, we want to have this in our index. It, you know, if you review some of these other sites, hmm, you could have them, you, you could take them or leave them. Uh, and one that does not feel very SEO'd. And I, I think you all know what I mean. There's sort of that sixth sense of, boy, they're, they're doing a lot of things on the page and off the site that, that don't feel like they're natural, don't feel like they're for users. Whenever you have that sixth sense around a site, that, that's going to put you in a higher danger category. And not doing that, having that very natural sort of site, you can target keywords, do a good job with your titles, do a good job with your content, right? do a good job with your internal linking, but make it feel very natural. I'll give you a good example. Uh, Amazon, very well SEO'd, but doesn't feel SEO'd. Zappos, doesn't feel SEO'd. Uh, even SEO Moz, right? doesn't, it doesn't feel very SEO'd, but it's, but it's doing a good job. Uh, TechCrunch, doesn't feel SEO'd, but ranks phenomenally well. And, and finally, having those strong brand signals, right? The branded searches, lots of people searching for your brand name specifically, uh, good links, good mentions, good press, good user and usage metrics. All these types of things are going to protect you from uh, a lot of these types of spam attacks. Now, that being said, there's nasty stuff that other people can do. So you want to, A, keep your eyes wide open. Make sure you're registered with Google Webmaster Tools so you can get any of these warnings ahead of time. If you happen to see an influx of really nasty looking links, you might want to send a preemptive reconsideration request to Google saying, hey, we don't know where these came from and we have nothing to do with this and we just want you guys to know that, that this is not our activity. Please feel free to disregard or not count these links. 
99% of the time, Google is not going to say, oh, these bad links that are pointing to you, we're going to count those as uh, reducing your SEO and bringing you down in the rankings. They're instead going to say, oh, well, we're going to ignore these, right? We're going to remove the value that these pass. They're not going to pass page rank or anchor text value or, or, or link trust or whatever it is. We're just going to count the good stuff. I remember being in a session, this was years ago, probably five, six years ago, with, uh, with Matt Cutts, the head of web spam for Google. And he was looking at a site on his computer, and the, the person asked about their, their website from the audience, and he said, you know, we see, uh, I see, you know, I don't remember what it was, 14,000 odd links pointing to this site, but Google's actually only counting about 30 of them. That's why you're not ranking very well. Most of those, most of those links, we've removed all the value that they pass. So it's not that they were having those bad links hurt the site, right? It's just that they're, they're saying, oh, th these are not going to pass any more link value. Now, what, what I would suggest here is what, if you see stuff that looks like manipulative and negative SEO, you just be careful. And, and we are trying to do some things here at SEO Moz to help with this. So one of the things our, uh, our data scientist, Dr. Matt Peters, is working with uh, some folks here at Moz to build a large list of spam so we can do some classification. And eventually inside the Mozscape index, which will appear in Open Site Explorer, show up in your pro web app, show up in the Moz bar, we'll try and classify sites to say, hey, we're, we're pretty sure this is spam. This looks like the kind of thing where we've pattern matched and seen Google penalize or ban a lot of these sites. Uh, we're also trying to build some, um, some metrics to show you know, what are really good and high quality and, and editorially given sites. So domain authority and page authority already exist to try and do that. And then we're also running some experiments where we're going, you know, I've uh, offered up my personal blog, which is a, a relatively small site, probably has as few links as any of these, probably fewer than just good cars, uh, ranfishkin.com to see if you know, some of these, these nasty folks uh, who, who are hitting you know, and, and taking down uh, sites with negative SEO would like to concentrate their focus on, on my sites um, for two reasons. Number one, we'd, we'd be very curious to see it happen. And number two, we can certainly afford the hit. Uh, we offered up SEO Moz as well. Most people seem to think that SEO Moz is not a good target. It won't, uh, won't actually be taken down. And uh, we're going to run some experiments internally as well on this front and, and hopefully be able to disprove that you know, negative SEO is a common thing that works very well. I'd hate to see an industry spring up like this. I think that this, this type of activity, particularly some of these really nasty things, are just an awful part of being um, you know, around the black hat spam sphere. And I hope that it's something we can, we can defend against. I hope you'll, uh, you'll join me in contributing. I, I look forward to your comments. If you've seen stuff like this before, please do feel free to uh, talk about it either anonymously or openly in the comments. And I will see you again next week for another edition of Whiteboard Friday.